All right, welcome back once more. Here we go with the clay part, finally, of speed sculpting. So uh, what I have brought into the equation is uh, monster clay that I heated in the microwave, and then I cut it up into uh, manageable parts. Uh, what happens with this is if you have a smaller piece you throw into your little a foil oven, your lamp oven, it's easier to warm them up. And then uh, once they're separated, they warm up uh, easier in the microwave as well. So I have these pieces already done. So balls, whatever pieces you guys want, like, you know, small, even maybe smaller pieces than this, uh, cylinders. I'm doing specific shapes here. So cones, cubes, I'm doing the mushroom guys, so and creatures, things, whatever. So I did some little caps already I kind of just you know it's like dough i made a few of those and after i heated them up and cut all these little pieces out i went in and uh threw that in a microwave for about 30 seconds 40 seconds in the container safe and you know they stuck together just a little bit but i could feel the heat it could feel they're still warm so for these ones i don't necessarily even need the oven as much because it's it's nice and malleable already. This is the medium density seconds, and, it's, and it feels warm in my hands. So this is going to make things much easier. I will still turn on my foil lamp here off to the side, off camera, and check that out. Another thing I wanted to show you was the pack of glass eyes I got from Amazon.com. I think I got 144, like 70 pairs. Something crazy like that. All these different cat's eyes. There's dragon eyes, doll eyes, but these are glass. And as you can see, they have some curvature. They're not quite round enough to, for me to sell. And then uh, the black inside the iris of the eye. Uh, what I was thinking is I might want to take a real fine sandpaper and scratch that out so you could have like a true black like inside cave, uh, inside the eye uh, channel. So these are... Pretty awesome. Uh, also, stamp pieces. I took away some old, like really old electronics or remote control, but any sort of formed plastic like this, as well as nuts and beads. And then, of course, if you're doing a genre, like I was doing some steampunk -y stuff, I ordered some steampunk cogs and whatnot. And that's how uh, I'll show you how to use these. But that's where this, a lot of the shapes. Um, inside of this creature came from like you know these little hard surface shapes. Those are hard to tool uh, by hand, and and the different end uh, shape of the tool you know adds to the creativity and the fun of what you're doing because that's what you do with the digital realm as well. Same thing with this guy. He actually used some of the cogs in the character design. Like I gave him like little glasses on there and left one on his chest. Uh, I saw a good recommendation from Stan Winston School. You can see how nice these uh, edge these shapes turn out, though. And that was to, uh, if you're going to add non-clay elements to your clay maquette, to um, take the color of the clay down to your paint store and buy a little quart of matched clay color. And that way, the, the whole thing kind of keeps a unified design. And you don't end up... Um, Got that Frankenstein look of, you know, you have this nice clay, all this detail, and then all of a sudden you're like jabbing, you know, PVC pipe, like white plastic parts or green felt. You know, it, it, it kind of breaks. If you're building an actual stop motion puppet with real world materials, of course, but you, even then you would paint the materials to represent, you know, accurately. Um, for doing stencil, for a little hole pops too, I got this little electronics piece of different size radius holes. So if I want to pop those in there. Um, this one's also one of my favorites is the actual little circuitry board that came inside. I definitely stamped a bunch of this guy um, on here. You can see like the little pieces here inside the shoulder, these little grooves and ridges. I guess the zoom doesn't work that well in this one. Let's see if it works well in this one over here. And, uh, is that zooming off my face and onto this one? Not quite. Okay. It's worth trying at least. Okay, so let's get uh, resituated back to the sculpting sculpture stand here. And let's get to it, shall we? All right, so I'll set all these stamps aside. Oh, I also got a rolling pin. 
little uh, acrylic rolling pin used for Sculpey. So um, if you have a, you know, old cooking utensils work great for this stuff. So if you just need an old spoon, fork, an old rolling pin, you don't have to go buy new stuff if you don't want to, but it's nice to have some dedicated stuff to clay that you know doesn't have some food particles in it. So I also have a piece of tempered glass. Uh, I, you could just get a piece of plexiglass from like a cheap plastic picture frame or something and take the plexi out. Uh, plexi allows you to scrape and um, kind of keep the clay from sticking to surfaces. You can sculpt just on cardboard or whatever, but I find that to be uh, this to be a little bit um, better surface for me, especially if I want to roll pieces out and carve, which what I'm going to do today. So let's start out with a couple of these. Uh, I have my little wire sculpture guy, so I'm going to leave these to the side for the just a moment, and let's get straight into the uh, other part of the assignment, which is the speed sculpts for doing um, busts and things like that. So I think maybe for this one, let's see. Let's move the camera over a bit and see if we can get a little bit different camera angles going here. Maybe a little closer than what we had before. Let's see how that holds up. And maybe I'll pause this for just a second until I get this set up just right. Okay, we're back. So I think this will work out all right. You got a little windows and windows. It's all good. Okay, so there's a lot uh, to think about here. So you have these, you still have uh, the process you're following for creativity, right? You're looking at gestures, you're looking at, you know, idols, walks, jumps, uh, storytelling um, poses, you're looking at the silhouette, and uh, we're looking at exploring pose, uh, for instance, like the one on the, you know, the poncho clothing garments. And then we're going to stamp in some pattern in there, which pattern can be sculptural pattern, right? It doesn't need to be just colored pattern. So let's leave it. Uh, let's leave it there for a second. Um, don't let the color throw you off too much. And let's kind of let's build up a character bust just for this particular one, just from scratch. So I do have down here. I have uh, my heat gun. So this is going to give me a really quick melt on any of the clay that's not adhering correctly. So I mentioned this in class, you pr probably should have a heat gun if you're working, if you're gonna be working in this clay uh, beyond the class and you should be able to get one really cheap, like under 20 bucks. So um, so here's a piece I have right here. And so I just have these uh, little balls of clay um, already heated up and ready to go. I also did some, heated up some clay and made it, uh, let's see, let's get it all over here instead. Yeah, it kind of preheated some of it into almost like a morel mushroom and I even put a hole in it uh, prior so that way I knew I could, after it hardened, I could just take it in here and heat it back up again. Okay, so yeah, just some prep stuff, like just, you know, melt it, put it into balls, whatever, and then make it where it's easier for you to grab and you'll figure out. You just got to do a bunch of this stuff and it'll become obvious, uh, you know, what works for you. Everyone's different. So I still have my picture underneath the plexis or the glass. That's another reason why I like the plexi. I could put my uh, measuring grid underneath it. I could put any reference images and I can like clay, uh, put the clay around it that way, which is really handy. And a couple of the other clay tools I'm going to start using. So let's go ahead and put some of this clay on. So first things first, I'm going to take my little funneling knife here. And you can just use whatever butter knife you want. I'm just going to kind of slice this open a little bit like that and open it up like so. And let's see if maybe this one's a little... Yeah, shoot. Right there. Mm. Okay, I just thought something came a little bit while we're getting this. So uh, I opened this clip and now 
what you're going to experience some frustration early on is getting the clay to stick to itself. Okay, so with wet clay, what you would do is you would score it, or you would take a sharp tool and you would like do a bunch of lines in there. You'd score one side like that. You then go to the other side you want to attach. Score the other side, and you know get it really nice and roughed up like that. And you'd wet both sides and you'd stick them together when the clay is not too dry yet. So for this clay, it's somewhat similar. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to heat it with the heat gun. So and I'm just really careful to see because they will burn the flesh right off your skin. So I'm just going to heat this little piece of clay up here, making sure I'm aiming it away from my body and my hands here. It gets a little wax. It melts very, very quickly. It's a nice oily. Melted wax it. Okay. Set my heat gun down in a safe spot. And then what I can do is I could score this up. And if you have, there's a whole variety of tools you could score it with. But basically, it just amounts to just scratch, scratching it up so that the clay can attach to itself. That's all. Okay, and then I can get in here to the base and push it down nice and solid onto the block, wrap it around that wire. And that should give us some kind of solid grip. Now, if we were doing the arms and things like that, of course, we could do it the same way. So, we go. Make sure. Now, because this armature wire is not wrapped, right? So if we took the wire and we wrapped the smaller floral wire, floral wire around it, because it doesn't have that extra uh, twine or wrap uh, lashing on there, it's, it doesn't stick to the wire very well. So if I push a little bit, see, it just like just peels right off. Okay. So um, just be aware of. Uh, you're going to discover for yourself uh, how fast the dri the clay stiffens up, how long to put it in the microwave, how soft you want it to be. I can't give you a magic formula for that just yet. Okay, so there's um, going for uh, the short the waist the waist up on this character, right? So I'm looking for going from like this would be his chest and face and whatnot. So for the face. I'll kind of leave that sticking up for a minute. So I'm going to drop a face in there and make sure I'm gripping it around. Maybe uh, maybe try and center it up on the base a little bit more. And as the clay is getting built up on there, grab some other pieces here. And now I can get, maybe get some smaller balls of clay, some chunks like this. And this is where I would have my uh, oven handy. And let me set this clay on top of another piece of wood just so nothing bad happens to the surface here. I don't want to melt my plexiglass. Oh, which reminds me of the other tool I had set aside here. I also have the pasta roller. If you want to get a cheap pasta roller, I think you can get a, just get the cheap one you can find, you can even get a used one. And that'll let you roll out some um, sheets of clay on there. Okay, so yeah, if I, if I try to stick this on here, you'll see it's not going to adhere that great if it's not, if it's not um, warm enough yet. So... What I can do is just take my heat gun here and very carefully make sure nothing's going to catch fire around it too much. And I'm just going to hit this clay a little bit in the top. Let's spin around. There we go. The hand. Okay. Small white balls of clay. Okay. Add them on the wooden base there a little bit, and it works. Okay. 
So once it starts really melting and glistening, like it's going to start dripping, that's when I want to stop, I think, on there. And now I can press this clay, and you see it's, it's really, really slick now. And almost like a peanut buttery consistency. Now you can press, you can use your tools, and you can, now you can really kind of press the clay, push behind it with the other hand and kind of support it and push the clay into itself. Like that. Back and forth. So that way, if the molecules, uh, if you press back and forth, the clay becomes stronger at a molecular level uh, by by stroking the clay in different directions, it's actually going to get stronger in binding to itself, not just the new pieces you put on, but the all the clay. It's going to get stronger. So I'm kind of dragging and pushing up and dragging back down again, almost like a crisscross pattern. And I'm still learning monster clay. I've been using all the other clay for years, the plasticine, plastilina, wet clay, sculpey, all that good stuff. So, you know, I'm sure if you watch some other techniques online, great. Okay. So I want to give him a bit of a upward attitude. So I'm going to bend his face looking up a little bit because when you're looking at these things around the table, it's pretty rare to be down here looking at a sculpture, right? If these little maquettes are usually down below you on a table. So having him looking up a little bit, so I could take one of these other pieces here. Let's see, and none of these really heated up all that much. So let me just uh, get my whole little bag here. Oh, that's right. We are going to look at the torch. Crème brûlée torch. I think it's about seven bucks. There you go. So crème brûlée torch, you turn this one on. Trigger. Definitely. Uh, not sure if we could bring these little guys into class or not, but this is going to go really fast, right? So you can kind of lightly torch the clay, like you would some crème brûlée. Turn that off. It's just fun to show the torch because it's a torch, little baby hand torch. There we go. And then just be careful when you touch. You don't know sometimes how hot can get there we go and i'm going to leave the armature wire sticking up above his head a little bit because i have this little hat already kind of shaped so that way i can pop the cap on top that and take it off easily so there's a little hole on there for that guy so i'm going to leave that off for right now And I want to maybe give him a little bit bigger head cap. There we go. So this one's a little bit, you can see the different sizes of this are. So whichever, I even have the, the widest one, which is actually thin, which actually matches the uh, design drawing here on the table. I'm going to play with that one as well. So maybe I'll set those there for a second. And, you know, have stuff on standby ready to go when you're doing this. So that way, once you get in the rhythm, you don't have to stop too much what you're doing. And okay, so that should work pretty good. So we got enough of a pin sitting up so I could put an accessory on there. So if you had like a big head of hair, big giant set of horns, something like that, you'll want to maybe work on those separately, maybe put a separate wire in them and then kind of put it on top here. Okay. See if I can get this a little bit easier to work with. Oh, do be careful if you want to use a creme brulee torch not to uh, melt or burn the fire season. It will burn. There it goes. Okay. So now I can just use my my fingers. So mainly just use my thumb and drag and push. To the clay and i hope this focus is doing all right here and i got too close have to refocus all 
There we go. Okay. And these tools are kind of rolling around. There we go. And you see, it's going to sag. It's going to. It's going to sag, and it's going to droop. And and if the clay's been microwaved, I found that it really sags a lot. And so you want to build back up what you're doing here. <clears throat> I'll just spray my cats away. Um, okay, so let's give them a little bit of uh, attitude. So here's this little hat. I'm looking at uh, the pictures here on the side where it's got kind of this long spindly body. You know, around the waist is fine. Again, this is not, my assignments aren't that rigid. They're mainly any limitations and parameters on this is to save you time to keep you from going down a time sink or, you know, wasting, you know, maybe making a big giant thing, you know, using too much clay or trying to do something super long and spindly. That's going to be really difficult to construct when you're first kind of getting the sense of how the clay works. But that should work pretty well. Now, if I wanted this to stiffen up and come back to it later, what I would do is take this guy and put him in the refrigerator for a little bit and then grab my next base and maybe get some clay on that one, right? And then grab my other one. So if I got three of these to do, I want you to try and get, you know, at least three wire sculptures of three of these gestural busts or digital, whatever medium you're working in and try this out. So there we go. Um, so I'm going to, Go ahead and pause for a second. I'm going to drop this off and then come back and do the other ones. And we're going to push each one and just gesturally sculpt it here as quickly as we can, trying to give myself like a five or 10 minute timer. Okay, so I threw that first one in the freezer for a few minutes to see how that uh, comes out, see how fast it stiffens up. And then I have a little plate of foil here. Again, <laughs> never throw this in a microwave. So just these pieces I want to keep nice and warm. And then uh, here's my heat box right here next to me. So I'm just gonna grab these pieces and put them in. And the paper plate, so in case you forget about it and it melts, it doesn't just drip and run out all over the box. So you don't have to have a plate necessarily. I just kind of found that uh, definitely been some times where I forgot about the clay and left it in there with the heat lamp too close to the surface with the foil door all shut and everything. And then before you know it, um, it's a big runny melted mess all over the place. So I'm going to keep those in there. And then if I want to grab any other pieces, I can throw them in there as well. And if I really need something quickly, though, I can just go and run it back over to the microwave. And this doesn't sound like a bad idea. And there you go. There's my first uh, hot mess of the the day, right? So I left it in there for just 30 seconds and one of the balls. Uh, that when the microwave, it gets really warm, like in the middle, it really goes through the clay effectively. And so now, I, you know, it's, it's really runny. I can use that to help connect the pieces together a little bit, but I just wanted you to be aware of just, uh, just what you're dealing with here with the monster clay as we all get used to this stuff. So yeah, the super runny stuff that's gets ready to explode from inside. Let's save that on the side here for a minute. And let's maybe get a piece that's not quite as drippy. So I mentioned the morel mushroom. So if I go back in to the uh, reference here, let's see if I can... Yeah, there's a bunch of different mushroom types. There's the morels on the bottom there. And so let's go hop back up to our reference for just a minute. There you go. See the top right corner. There's a the morel mushroom, the polyplore, the long discus ones, the fly agaric. And so there's a, such a variety of shapes. There's like the, the undersides more. They're all gnarly. There's so much you could play around with in there. And go back to these shapes as well. And so what I'm going to do is uh, take a couple of these pieces here that I feel pretty com confident and I'm going to place it. Looks like my hand's getting in the way. I'm going to press it around this wire 
and let's see if a little more top-down view helps. Okay, there we go. So now um, I'm pressing down the clay on the base to make sure that it has a sturdy foundation. Um, I can always scrape the clay away. Spin in there. There we go. And now my clay from the oven is really handy as well as the uh, clay that I just microwaved. With the shortcut and the pasty stuff. It's like, so you literally can just get in there and like scoop it. So working with the clay at these different levels of melted consistency, as long as the first one is a little cooler, it's going to hold. It's not going to slag. This this uh, microwave stuff, however, has got this real pasty kind of melted consistency. As I put it on there, it's not going to hold anything with the weight. It's just going to like sag and droop, which can be cool. So I'm going to just kind of run with it because I've seen that done before. So I'm going to go in here and I'm going to take the morel shape one that I just kind of did like a bit of a bulb and made a hole prior. And so there's that one and there's the other one. It's actually a little bit warmer. Is this one. And I'm just going to kind of put that down with the head on there. There we go. And now I can go in here and this one's fairly solid. The other part was pretty solid. It might sag some more. It doesn't feel like it's going to sag too much more though. And now I can um, take my heat gun and heat this up a little bit. Let's see if this again, don't touch that metal. Melt away your skin, it will. Melt away your skin, it will. All right, there we go. And now I can kind of look at this guy and looking at all the different um, attitudes and postures that I had goofed around with and I'm thinking, okay, who is this character? What type of personality does he have? Is, uh, is there is it an emotional state the character's in? Is it going to be a like, particular storytelling pose for this character? Um, does he have any arms? Maybe I'll do, I'll do at least one that's uh, armless, so to speak. And you can see the clay is just kind of smoothing right on. No problems attaching. I'm just going to kind of run the, the new soft clay up with the other clay. And if it feels real wobbly, you got to use your own best judgment and just learn. And if it, you're going to melt this down most likely anyway and make a different character. So, it's, you know, it doesn't matter. Like it's not precious yet. You're not, you know, you're not doing your final. You're not doing a portfolio character yet you're using this to learn how fun with maybe it turns into one you never know but most likely this would be your speed sculpt maquette or a test piece that would then you would use to um morph into a more detailed study so you'd like you do studies right that's what these gestures gestural schools so yeah see if i just barely move it's like he's really really soft still so I'm not going to go too far and it was just, you know, it's just a single wire in there. It's not like he has shoulders or anything else to hold him up. Okay, so I'm going to maybe, maybe add a little more. I'm looking at my little reference, my gesture sketches in there. I'm thinking this guy might just be a an old uh, shopkeep. I'll do the shopkeeper. Right. There we go. And then maybe uh, I can start thinking about um, what his eye, where his eyes will be. So for parts like that, um, this is where the this glass comes in really handy. So if I'm going to start adhering parts in there, I could just mush them on there and shape them. But a lot of times it's better to, and I want you guys to practice this, to pick your shapes, pick your circles, your spheres, your, your squares or, or cubes. Um, cylinders whatever and you know practice making shapes and sticking them on right so if i were to just put eyeballs on 
straight away like that, right? They'll probably fall off. Right, that'd be my guess. So what you'll do with, in that case is um, you can torch it or take your heat gun, heat that particular little area that you want to adhere it to, as well as the pieces that you want to stick to it. So just take the little bit with the heat gun. And then I can take the sculpting tool and I can kind of so you're scoring the surface, scoring, you're creating these little channels for the clay to here. Let me make sure you guys can see that. Okay, and then if you do both sides, it's extra strong. Join, so scrape that side, scrape that side. And now if I adhere these on, it's gonna really stick. And now if I pull, they're not gonna pull off even, right? So that way I know I can sculpt it and shape it a little bit. So now I can get in here. And my favorite sculpting tools, there's the spoons and there's the uh, ho hockey puck. This one's the hockey puck, looks like here. A mini hockey stick for these guys. Okay, so this one I can kind of um, drag. If I want to seal this up around the edge, I can kind of drag and join those two um, surfaces together. You see, as I pull, you see the whole thing pulls, right? Because there's, no, there's nothing really holding it. That's good. I could remember that um, for shaping. So maybe I shouldn't do this detail yet. Maybe I should um, focus on some other some other shapes. And maybe I can hold it so it's not going like, to wiggle away too quickly. And so take the end of the hockey stick and you can kind of, you can, you want to tilt, you want to drag, you want to drag it this way, drag it down this way. You can tilt up and, and push up with it like that. It's a good technique. It's almost like picking. And if he's like a droopy eyed, um shopkeeper that's been working there along you know on the shop for generations whatever um and maybe he's got almost like morel mushroom styled um eyebrows you know i haven't thought about you know these guys in terms of having hair or anything like that so yeah so he's slagging pretty bad already so that's a start of something. Now, gesture, I can like push and twist and have him go, ooh, what are you doing over there? And then maybe he's more of a dynamic pose. Maybe he's uh, reaching for some inventory back behind him or something. Don't know yet. These are all the things I'm looking at my list in front of me. Um, you know, which types of geometry? You know, there's the cylinder, there's more the cone, there's the spheres is it have an iconic silhouette you know is, is he easily identifiable does he have any personality how is he articulated what's his attitude so let's go ahead and roll up some arms for him now the arms without armature they're gonna sag they're gonna break i'm not gonna sugarcoat this process but you may as well have fun with it and give it a shot let's see what happens right so you can roll, roll, so roll this against your glass or plexiglass surface much easier. All right. There we go. So same thing, trying to measure and keep things even before putting them in a pose helps a lot. Okay, so if I wanted to have him actually reaching for a piece of inventory or something like that, what I would do is I would attach these arms and like so. And I would actually build up a little, I put a piece of clay underneath and let it uh, support the arm. And I might even leave it there or I might do it and then take it out. I can, of course, always get a piece of armature wire and run it through. But chances are, as you push, it's going to slip and slide. And, and uh, go ahead and try it, though, if you want to. See what happens. So when, I, when I'm going to angle these on the armpits, what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut these at an angle that works for the 
um, shoulder. So usually that's at like a 45 degree angle. So cut one there. And then if he's reaching outward, maybe it won't be quite as dramatic. I'll just trim it down a little bit. So you see that's a 45 degree cut. That's going to go on nicely there. And then this other one's kind of, if he's twisting his head, it'd be over like this. There we go. Something like that. Okay. So same thing. These aren't going to stick very well, and they most likely will slag. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to score the ends. So score that. And watch out for balls of clay getting everywhere. I'm going to score this one as well. There we go. And then pick an attachment point. So for that, I'm going to mark with my tool roughly where I want the attachment point to go. So let's see, um, make sure I know where my center line is. So my character center line is right here. So shoulders should go, shoulders are going to go right about there. So this is called your vertical key line. You should know from figure and horizontal key line. And so if his head's twisting, I don't want to forget where his actual center of his body's at. So I'm going to put a shoulder there and one out here. I'm just going to mark those real quick where I want arms to attach at. There we go. And it's my first video doing these in a while. I will make sure I get the position of the camera. It's a little better for the future, as you can see a little bit better on the technique. So there we go. So there's like a little circle cut around exactly where the arm's going to go. And I'm going to score that part as well, where it's going to attach. And then go back over here. I'm going to score that side as well. So the two sides. So score both attachment points. And then I'm going to get the most melted clay I can find. So I just dipped in my peanut butter, my, my chocolate, melted chocolate. My finger's not that hot. So I'm going to put some of that melted on each side and then put the arm in there. I'm going to press. And it should, it should be pretty, a pretty strong join. Now that the depending on the clay itself, like how stiff it is, this the attachment strong, but it might still, the weight of it might bring it out. So I, that's why I have the hand touching the clay here. And for the other side, yeah, and you're going to get clay on the bottom of your basis. So that's what I'm saying. Watch, make sure you're on paper or something. It's not going to ruin grandma's table or whatever. Put that one there. Okay, so same thing. Go in here, grab some nice... Uh, super slick melted wax on your finger put it on each end don't burn yourself okay and i'll have him saying hey well you might want that potion over there right so the shoulder should be higher right this is reaching up okay and then as soon as i get the sense that this guy is that arm is adhered but the weight could sag and bring it down. I'm just going to put a ball of clay underneath the arm for now, like that. And that way it'll hold. Now, this clay doesn't shrink, right? This is one of the nicer things about it. So that should hold pretty well. Okay, so thinking all the way through. So storytelling poses, attitude. This is going to be the shop. Keep trying to sell you something from the top shelf. Um, the hands, the detail, the face, everything. I can't get into that until the core shapes are there and he's stable and he's not going to fall apart. And uh, in terms of the size of the character so far, so good, I think. He's uh, just at the outer limit. So, yeah, he's just about six inches tall, exactly. So I want, you know, four to seven at the most. But he's not a crazy volume. Right? He's going to take up like half a tub of clay. Okay, so let's get the one from the fridge and let's do a third one as well. Okay, so yeah, um, just set this guy aside for a second. I got this guy from the freezer. He was there for just the last 50 and it is, it is solid. That happened really fast. So pretty crazy how well that worked. Um, I'm tempted to do the same to this guy, but before I freeze him, um, I have the arm stable. 
and I'm going to turn my heat lamp off for a second, just let the foil door trap in enough heat to keep that because it's starting to get liquidy. I don't want it quite that damp yet or uh, wet. And I'm going to just use a regular, just flat edge, round edge, whatever you want to use. You could even just go with your hockey stick. And I'm going to kind of chisel down and take away, subtract um, the form a little bit around the waist. I, I had played with the bottom having like little bell, bell bottom almost, or little pot belly shapes in here and there. This wasn't one of the characters, I don't think. So I'll try and do something a little differently. The base on there. And... Just take a spin, look at this from the back side as well. See how bad his head slopes. Yeah, see it's kind of really tilting back. Not too bad, but let's give it more of an arc flow. So I'm kind of leaning the whole thing forward. So that way I can keep the slope of his head going backward. But then I bent the whole thing forward a bit. So that way I could keep a nice arc, a gesture line, right? You're looking for gesture. And take the hockey stick. Actually, there's my larger knife. There we go. And there's the funnel knife. It's literally, you can go here and cut. So you want to get nice, big, recognizable, simple shapes out of this. There we go. The, cutting out the middle of the back a little bit. Turn that light off, see if that helps. Turn that one off. There we go. So yeah, too much light, you know, isn't always a good thing. It kind of blows out your shape so you can't really see. Maybe this one can stay on, but there we go. So kind of give him a little uh, hunchback there, something. And oh, the ball was to hold the arm up. We gotta be careful, I don't take his arm away too soon. And um, I could add some more to the head as well. I'm just going to kind of look from the top down here. I'm going to pinch upward and drag with my fingers and kind of make it a little pointier. And each time I press and move, I'm kind of feeling... You know, is my sculpture getting, is it feeling weaker? Is it starting to wobble all over the place? Or is it stiff enough enough where I can do this? And so far, so good. So it's almost becoming like my old grandma. A couple of my grandmas had the old beehive. It's almost becoming like a beehive hairdo a little bit, which is kind of cool. Okay, so beehive hairdo. And since it's nice and soft still, if I want to scoop it out, more like an actual, see all the, the grooves forming in there. So shapes and pattern. And I can get in when it's this soft and more easily carve away than when it's hard. It's going to be you know, a little obvious, but it's going to be harder to carve out the clay from this. So let's do it now with our loop tool. All the clay is soft. You see, I can kind of get this little peanut buttery wispy you can kind of pinch and pull the clay up as well so yeah maybe i'll run with that maybe i'll leave some like a little opening top like make it like flare open almost there we go yeah cool um you know, everyone loves Groot, right? <laughs> so he's like little rooty plant-like tree people. You know, there's going to be a lot of that in the modern reference. These types of characters. And then go back to the fore, uh, front here, and then I can continue. You don't wanna, I don't want to rip it all the way, so I'm going to support behind it and press against and drag and pull some of that clay back down again. So I'm trying to remember if you crisscross, your tool, 
back and forth with the clay, as long as you're holding it and doesn't crack it and break it, you're gonna make it stronger by doing this. It should get some molecular strength. I can always bring these in, put it behind them. Peel, the other end of the hockey stick's got like a sharper end, it's good for kind of carving back in. Those type of shapes. And you can drag using the hockey stick some more. And let's dip that scoop out before this clay hardens too much. I'm going to throw it in the freezer as well. Um, this little hoop here. And around. And this guy here. And I'm going to start really gouging and scoring. That's what the hoops are for. For peeling out and not like leaving a bunch of. Um, clay in the wake. So as I scoop this out and pull, I'm making like a nice big pit in the head. So I'm going to kind of do a series of these pits. Like that. And I'll try and vary the size and shape of them a little bit as I carve them out. Not too concerned yet with... Um, Maintaining too much detail, I'm just concerned with it falling apart on me while I'm in the middle of doing this. And I take these little balls, right, that come out, and I might roll them since they're nice and warm. I might be able to roll them and like add them back in, in between these forms, right, and kind of bolster and zigzag. I'm just making this shit up as I go, man. I'm not. <laughs> I wouldn't say there's no plan. I would say that the prep work, all the research and thumbnails and you know, all the different iterations kind of flows into making some natural and cohesive design. So I hope you guys get a chance to experience that firsthand. I have a smaller hoop. This one's you know, a little big. I should finish the other side though and then do the same at least. So you can also do like longer, thinner, Scoring marks like that. I'm just going to leave the balls on here just so I go faster. And then maybe back around the eyes. And being gentle, like as I push, I'm kind of making sure he's not rocking all over the place because all those little micro fractures will make it like super weak. There's a nice heavy one dug out of there. And then his arm seems to be doing okay. I am concerned it will break off still, so I'm just kind of. Leave that ball of clay underneath on the back of the neck here and pick a whoop. Yeah, so I pushed right there. I saw the whole bottom here, the base, like lift up off of the clay. So you got to kind of watch that and kind of press and keep it pinched, keep it tight. So when it stiffens up, at least the base is strong, right? You don't want it to fall, fall over or slip off or whatever. Okay, here's the... Um, smaller wire tool scores uh scoring tool so and you can always just bend some wire into shape or you know you know i don't want you to be shape dependent on any of this stuff or or tool dependent i mean in making your shapes but this one's fun to use so i'm just giving you a little variety of all the different tools you can play around with and you can order these you can get a pack for another few bucks or just go down uh, to michael's or blick and pick out a little set of wire tools if you want, or clay tools, ceramic clay tools. Okay, so it's got a lot of texture on there. It's one of the most fun parts of working with clay. 
All right, there's a lot of character already. Um, I'm going to accentuate the old lady look. So maybe here where the eyes are. I'm going to um, really sag uh, the eyelid here, right there, and then come up under here and do the other side too, and kind of sag the eyelid. There we go. And then I can go in and I can pull swivel and pull up. Go in, swivel and drag back. And by doing that motion, it is weakening the sculpture a little, but it's also giving a lot of character. And these little pieces go flickering off. I can just kind of put them in a safe spot. There we go. And then maybe behind those openings. Now I can you can twist and twirl and, and wiggle the tool about in different uh, different ways. It's also a lot of fun to do. See if I can hold this up for you guys. So as I'm going, I can kind of pull and twirl and twist and drag in a different way. Let me make sure I got my hand behind to support it. And whoops, and now it goes clay into the carpet. So I gotta make sure I go get that right away. And you know, old folks, so I guess maybe I'm one of them now. <laughs> get a lot of the wrinkles though, right? So it's really fun to do these more gnarly fantasy characters, fantasy characters that have lots of fun wrinkles and pores in them. The porcelain doll faced uh, Final Fantasy characters are cool too, don't get me wrong. But yeah. Okay, so that is, um, I'm going to add a little bit more detail into that. Let me come back. Okay, so it's still soft enough. I can you know, keep twisting and arcing this back a bit more and trying to get the pose as finished as I can and before I do any detail like the hands or the face, right? So I'm still just trying to get, um, see even the arms, like if I were to go push these arms on right now, I most likely would break them off. So I have to be patient, but I can, do a little bit. I can kind of these morel mushroom channels I started up in here. Let's see if I. Uh, I can still go in here and see if my arm's out of the way here. I can like scoop a little bit more because it's still so soft. This stuff's fun, man. It's like peanut butter. So. And the light and the shadow have uh, it's getting darker. So as it's getting darker, I am adjusting my lights and taking a little step away and making sure that I don't um yeah I'll get this guy making sure that I don't um get to where I can't see that well my forms and my shape so I want like a nice balance of lighting in my space so I get a couple lamps just get cheap lamps whatever it doesn't have to be anything fancy there we go um i know i said not to do the face yet but i just want to do a little something in the eye socket still Yeah, I can't do much more, so I'm going to leave them, but I will pull down at least where I want the eye socket to go. I'm going to push that in there. And then if I want to continue with the pattern from up there down the body, um, I'm going to go ahead and do that. 
maybe have her toes kind of leaning back even a little bit more. There we go. I could feel the weight of the head starting to sink in back here, so I had to be careful. Maybe um, start sagging a lot, and it looks like it's going to get weak and break. Support it with more clay. Um, I have my balls of clay down here in my heat lamp. Right. At this point, I have some patterns emerging around the head. So when I add the clay in there, I can kind of try and follow some of those patterns and, and try and bolster and reinforce the shapes I'm doing in there. It goes. Um, and just adds to the, this, you know, when you're constructing these characters, you do want to think about, you know, real world considerations. You're gonna build a real character in the real world, I should say. Um, and so part of the construction process is thinking about the weight and the literal weight, how it's literally gonna move and balance, what material it might be made out of, um, how you would animate it, how you would display it. You know, those Nightmare Before Christmas characters are awesome, but man, they're, those things were a challenge to make, I bet. Okay, there we go. So then maybe a couple more grooves coming down here. There's the arm. Um, I would wait, but since I want to get this demo done today, I'm just going to jump right in here and see if I can, supporting the back of the arm as I carve, I'm just going to kind of add some grooves in here yeah so this would this would be smarter to do while it was uh, harder i think it's gonna the clay stiffens up pretty good so we'll see it does and it's good to hint at pattern not overdo it so i'm gonna pick and choose where i want the eye to settle to rest what type of Too many tools in the way. There we go. So I kind of went a little wild up in here. So I don't want to make that everywhere. I want to, you know, it's part of the drawing process of deciding where to to change the shape of these forms. Maybe this one will go drag all the way down. Maybe through the. Through the chest there there we go under the armpit maybe a hint at like you know, it's if it's a female for me or whatever if it had breasts if it had other appendages if it had garb now's a good time to do that as well um, bony protrusions it's kind of a little blobby at the minute at the moment which I'm okay with it, but that's a common mistake actually for a lot of this type of work is uh, forgetting to put in some sharp edges and bony protrusions. And... Yeah, getting clay balls everywhere today. That's all right. So will you. There we go. And then maybe, uh, yeah, so define in bony protrusion, possibly like if there's a little bit more almost of a neck right there and then do one on the other side as well there we go and then if it had almost like a you know do like underneath like the eye sockets here And sagging forward, not quite a mouth. I had almost like these vents thought up for, now it's almost looking like an ant, like a beard, but I had these like vent-like openings for these creatures on a couple of older designs that maybe I'll go back to that they kind of speak through. 
And if I have my little scoring, if, if you don't let this thing get clogged up with too much clay too quickly, and I can get in here and I can really kind of like scoop that out. Oh, and then I can twist and make it wider as I go. So I'm, I'm picking a couple key areas here to accentuate. And although this demo will end up taking like a good solid hour, it's still a speed sculpt because if you do two or three of these, you know, you're not spending 10 or 20 or 30 hours on them. So it's still a pretty fast process if you think about it. So I kind of get the pit of the inside of the eye. And then go back underneath. I'm trying to get these bags of the eyes showing even more. Yeah, it's still too soft. It just kind of came up on me there. I didn't want it to. It's all right. It's clay. You can always warm a little piece up and Grab it from there and just stick it back in there. If it's, uh, if it's all still warm, you've been working it for a while. That's the only way to get the hang of answer the question like, okay, is it how hard or how soft I want it for this step in the process or that step in the process? We ask a lot that a lot in class. It's like, well, <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> Uh, how's it been working on it so far? You got to like figure these questions out on your own. Okay, so I think I'll call this guy uh, done at least for the level of um, softness that he is at the moment. I'll go back and add uh, some little hands, fingers, and eyebrows on him after um, he's stiffened up. So I'm going to run him over to the freezer and be careful supporting them, making sure all the clay balls you don't get any wax balls in the frozen produce. <laughs> and then I'll be back and I'll finish up the other one as well. Okay, I might have to cut this uh, video off here in a minute, but um, we got a lot done today, so it's good. Back on the uh, original concept of this. So the head uh, being this mushroom cap. So what I can do is grab some of this super melted gooey clay from the heat lamp and I can bring it in here and I can score it up and let's actually grab the heat gun a quick second and just getting a good habit of just setting it down not holding it because I've burnt myself once or twice with these things and it's not fun so just enough to um when you score it it gets that nice bond on there there we go and should have done the same with this one part as well on top. It's still really soft. Okay, and then I put this extra goopy piece on there. And, uh, you know, I wanted to take this off. Actually, I don't know why I just did that, but it's okay. So just kind of push that down. That, and then once I get it on there, and it feels pretty sturdy, I'm going to pop it back off again. And see if I can't make it almost like a little hat for this guy. Uh, and as I designed them in, uh, this is gonna be for game. Um, also, now I can kind of push, pull that clay on there. So it gets some nice long running streaks, just using your fingers. Um, but yeah, if this is gonna have like, a, if he's gonna level up or change or whatever, I could um, easily make like equipable items out of this or something pick up items maybe changes so making the hat or the cap separate from the body is an obvious i think idea to anyone that does a mushroom type character 
And then I try and keep my clay really clean or my workspace in general, especially with my digital stuff. So um, watch out for lint and hair. When you drop it on the carpet or ground, make sure you pick it out because you don't want to get the, you don't want hair and lint in your nice finished sculpture. If you're reusing the clay and you're making molds. So I'm just kind of dragging my fingers and making a, some kind of little pattern here in the bottom. And since it's, I'm getting the super, oops, I don't want to get it in my nails if I can avoid it. Um, the super melted stuff from my heat box, I'm getting this kind of. Fun pattern. Let's see, try to put that back on again. Yeah. Grab another handful. Of the uber gooey wet stuff is from the heat box. And I'll kind of just spread it on. And when I spread it on, I pull it out. I'm going to make this guy have like tattered edges around. So he's going to be more of like the uh, more rugged character, I guess. I'm going to pinch. You see it's not sticking to the colder stuff on the top outside. It's one thing you'll learn just like real clay. Yeah, the softer stuff don't stick very well to the harder stuff. So let's fix that. So I'm going to spin this around. Let me see it melts. Again, aim it away from my body. It just takes a few seconds in each spot and keep spinning it and let it settle because it will burn the clay and then it'll go hard to work with. There we go. Okay, now let's try that again. I'm gonna pinch some of this fresh clay on the, the edge, and you see it's gonna stick really nicely now. Pinch both sides and pull. Pinch both sides and pull. And a nice kind of long, um, this pinch pull technique I learned Master sculptor animator Leslie Padian. I'm just kind of sticking it on first, like let it adhere for a minute, and then I'll go back and pinch and pull it off some more. And yeah, it dried up well, pretty fast already. So let's get back over there again. I'm beating up both sides just a little bit. If I can pinch, I will be a little more. And these are speed sculpts, so I'm not worried about any beautiful, perfect symmetry or, or design. And my stamps, all that I might do like a little biomech. Biosynthoid, fungoid version of these for the next speed sculpt. I've seen mushrooms that have edges like this. I forget the names of all of them. Okay, so I gave myself a nice little pinchy frill, and I can kind of curl something that'd be hard to draw and show in 
2D, right? Just a little hard curly okay. pull. Can even if I want to use the tool instead of my fingers. It's always advisable if you can get away with it. Depends on what you're doing. Sometimes you need that tactile sensibility to avoid busting something up too much. There we go. Yep, so I was hoping for. It feels real weak. I'll just kind of mush it on back on to itself a little bit. Now, if it feels weak, I don't want to pull and rip larger parts off than I want. So I'm going to let it solidify, at least for a little bit, and then maybe um, put some on the bottom. There we go. So let's do this quickly and we'll call this a wrap. So I'm just gonna make a little pasta worm out of this, enough to kind of evenly distribute around the outer edge. There we go, like so. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There we go, and then do a pinch drag pull with my finger or with the tool. Um, hey. Yeah, get familiar, get comfortable with your tools, see when it's great to use your fingers. You want to find out when you want like certain shapes, like you can't really do that with your finger, can you? I'm supporting it from behind and pushing on the backside a little bit as I go. So this should turn out pretty good. At least something I'll be relatively happy with. And I see a little awesome texture from clay work, right, compared to most any other mediums you're going to play around with. I mean, this is really makes me hungry for chocolate for sure. Get the other one the lighter. There you go. It's a little wider wooden tool. You can get chopsticks and just shape them. Just get collect chopsticks if you don't want to go by. But these wooden tools are pretty cheap. Eh, I guess not really. Depends. But just get whatever um, chopsticks and popsicle sticks or coffee stirs and shape them. Just don't get them so soft where they just splinter and shatter too easily. You want to get something at least strong enough that's going to hold its shape when you. There we go. So that's looking pretty good. So this is going to have a really nice texture in the lighting. And this is, gives me a lot of ideas for the digital versions of these characters that I'm making when I get into the digital sculpting app. I definitely want to play with this idea. The under cap. It's much easier to work with like this as a separate object than if I had it on there, right? So if I did that and I was trying to do this from underneath, I mean, that would be pretty insane to try and get that. All right, so continue with this tomorrow, and then we'll do the digital version of it. Let's see if we can get. There you go. And then we'll, we'll kind of decide down on this colder part for tomorrow's lesson we'll show you uh, so this is nice and strong right it's not going anywhere so when you scrape the stronger colder 
wax, you get a completely different feel for how the clay is going to behave. All right. Enjoy. I hope you guys uh, got a lot out of that lesson and I'll send you more tomorrow.